fun thing that I don't want to do. Uh, David, it's good that you could join us this afternoon, and we're going to talk about some key characters in the city of Pflugerville, and uh, one was a couple, uh, Willard and Camille Pfluger. Those, those were, uh, Willard and Camille, they were two of the first people I met here in town. Uh, he had the, where the Texaco station is, uh, he had the front part, and Camille was there. He also had the grain elevator, uh, and those were two of the best people. Every year, Camille brought some feed down for the dogs in the dog shelter. And Willard, he learned I had I needed to get some cows to sell them, and that man showed up and helped me haul them to Taylor. That's the kind of guy he was. And he would not take a penny for helping me haul him cattle. Uh, now, the first person I met when I come to Pflugerville, we had just bought our land out on Weiss Lane, and I guess I was away from the farm too long and forgot about that slick mud, and I drove off into it and H.L. Weiss showed up with his tractor and pulled me out. And that was one of the first people I met in town was him or in the area. And uh, he pulled me out and again, he wouldn't accept anything. He was just, he was H.L. Weiss, one of the nicest guys in the world like he, like he is always. Um, then I guess the next person I got to meet was John Fluger and uh, Kareen Hooker when they were at the old bank, uh, the one on the corner. Uh, I had pulled in there, we were gonna live out here so we wanted to start a bank account and there they were and uh, John was such a great guy. Um, later on I wanted to borrow some money uh, and it wasn't all that much and I said I can't get to town because I'm working uh, shift work and he said well come by by that time they had moved and by that time I came by the drive-in bank and he had the loan ready for me to sign. All I had to do was sign that loan and he put the money in my account and it was that easy. I mean he was and he was a a lifelong friend as well. He, he always went out of his way to, to, to do things and help me out. Uh, another set of people was Frank and Lynn Gaddy. They had a, a little welding shop and they sold feed on the side right behind Wilder Pfluger where the Texaco station was. Later on it was converted to a, a car wash, I mean a washateria. But they had that place for years and I pulled in there and he welded me a rack on my truck. And ever since then, he's been one of the best guys with me forever. And, and Lynn, they were really good people to me. Where did their business move then? Then they moved down to where the car lot is now, in right by the old bar, there's a barber shop there. And they moved into that, I think that was, uh, I think that was Mr. Sagert's building, Buck Sagert, who was another great guy. He was on the council at, uh, during the time I was here. And all of this was before I ever came to work for the city. My next man I got to meet was Clements Whelan. Now that guy was great. Uh, I brought in my little, it was a Chevy Love pickup with an Izu, Izu motor in it. And he said, well, I've never done metric before. He said, but I've been wanting to try. So he had to overhaul my truck. And I came back in and his wife was, I think it was Bertha, was standing into the background. And she comes walking out kind of slowly and quietly and hands him a can of nuts and bolts and he says, yeah, these went to your truck somewhere, but I don't know where they went. And it was to me, it was one of the funniest things in the world. And he says, but the truck runs great. And he was right. The man did a wonderful job. And he said, I, that's my first metric job. And he said, I'll never do one again. And he enjoyed it and had a great time doing it. Now that was the Wheeling Garage. Yes, it's Wheeling and Garage. They, uh, also eventually opened up a parts store. Didn't they, they had the parts store there also uh, at that time. And uh, I brought everything to him. He was, he was a... Uh, he gave you the kind of care that you really want from a mechanic, somebody that cares about what he was doing. Even though he brought me out a can of nuts and bolts at the end of it, it was still okay. And we all got a kick out of it. And uh, it, it was really a, it was a fun thing to watch him talk about how he tackled that metric nuts and bolts on that truck and made it work. And it, it really ran great. It, it was still ugly though, but it ran great. And uh, Bertha was the bookkeeper maybe? I think she did some of the books and probably kept him in line too, I'm not sure. <laughs> but those two belonged together. They were a wonderful team when they worked together and it was just so much enjoyment to go into that shop. Uh, all of these brought, people brought me such enjoyment uh, coming out. Another one I got to meet real early was Robert Weiss. And I don't think enough people are really aware of some of the things that that guy did for the community. That was back in the days when everybody have a, had to have a phone in their house for the fire department. 
And Robert gave up many a Sunday and a Saturday staying at home because somebody answered that phone uh, because that was the only way to communicate with the fire department. And he, was, he is an awesome guy. He really did a lot for the community and, and for the fire department. Uh, later on, he was even on the city council. Uh, another person, uh, I think I've mentioned him a little bit, uh, and that's Clarence Bowles. And of course, everybody knows Clarence. Uh, he was a great boss for me. Uh, we were able to talk. We became good friends. And uh, you know, I, I can't say enough good about what he did for me and allowed me the opportunity to work and grow. And, and we just had a great times together. One of the other early characters was George Pfluger and his meat market. I loved going in there. It was a, when he made barbecue, this town really grew a lot that day because there were so many people coming from everywhere to eat his barbecue. And he was served on butcher paper. Uh, I watched him even make his sausage and he, he was a good sausage man. He really did it fast. I'd never seen it done quite like that. Uh, and he could make some great sausage if you wanted a, uh, a steak, he would go under the cool or the locker where the coal is, and he would take the a big calf, you know, the the whole hind quarter, and he'd come out there and cut you off some steak. And it was such a neat sight to see something like that, you know, where he would just actually throw it over his shoulder and carry it out and cut you off what you wanted. Uh, and he was just an awesome man. His business was in uh, one of the original buildings, the yes. Steger, uh, um store. And had wood floors. Yes, had wood floors in it. And, uh, and he had his pit inside. Yes, he uh, did. Uh, and then, well, no, I guess he no, was, it was outside. outside he had some on the inside, if I'm not mistaken. It, 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 you know, his memory kind of fades after a while, but I think he had them in both places. And then right next to him was Knievel's Tavern. Mm -hmm. And that was another great guy. Uh, tough, as everybody knew him by. He was a wonderful person. And then later on, he moved across the street uh, uh, to his final. Uh, uh, place where he was at. And that, you know, I could go on and on. There were so many good people in this town, but I just had to mention those few. Uh, you know, we got the Winnie Mays and the Jack Merchants and uh, uh, wonderful people. They, they were always here for you, always great people. Glenn Merchantson, I got to know him real good at nighttime. It seemed like he was my guardian angel. I would stop a car and then I would Notice down the street, he was stopping, and it looked like he was watching to make sure I was okay. You know, maybe he was just watching to see what kind of things I was doing, but he always gave me that feeling that he was kind of my guardian angel when he would park down the street, his big old beautiful Lincoln that he had, and uh, he always stopped there and just kind of kept an eye on things. Um, Glenn also was, um, he coached Little League football, uh, Little League baseball. Yes, he did. And he would take what seems like some of the scrubs, maybe that's not the right, unexperienced players, and by the end of the season, he turned that ball club around, and that man was one of the finest coaches you'd ever find out there. And he really cared for those kids. He was good. And uh, you, you, know, you have to wonder why he was there with them other than just love of the game and love of the kids, because he really, he was an awesome coach. And he really turned some inexperienced players around, and he showed them how to play it and what to do. And he was a great, great ball player with them kids. I think he actually ran for uh, county commissioner once. He did not uh, get the seat, but he uh, was he a might. candidate. I don't recall that time. That might have been a little bit before me, but well, I'm sure it was. Mm -hmm. But he was always there for me, and, and he was such a great guy to, to visit with at the nighttime. Um, the list still goes on. There's, there's still the Deerings and the, uh, the Tough and the Gladys and Shirley, you know, my, my two co-workers. Uh, we had a blast together up there when it was just, I guess it was them two and uh, Tony Graff, and it was just us four working for the city at the time. Uh, and that's uh, Gladys Weiss and Shirley Wurchin. Uh They were just a lot of fun. And back then they wore so many different hats. You know, I can imagine what it would be like now trying to do some of the duties that they did because they were, they were the municipal court clerk. They were, they typed reports for me. They sent out the water bills. Uh, they collected the water bills. They collected payments on everything. They issued permits. They did it all, and they knew how. I mean, it was a, it was one of, the, it was never one of those things. It's not my job. Mm -hmm. 
they really did it, and they were always so much fun to be around. Um, it, it was just a wonderful world in those days with these, these great people, and all these things combined kind of sold me on Pflugerville. They helped me say I made the right choice of coming out here with these folks because these are really good down-to-earth folks. And uh, again, I, I, you know, I, I mentioned so many, or I mentioned some. That's still just a drop in the bucket from the fine people that I met out here. Did you meet uh, J.B. and Mildred yes. Marshall? Yes, J.B. and Mildred. I, oh, I enjoyed those. Uh, she ran the tavern and, and J.B. was there. Uh, then later on, gee, who had it first, Norman? Uh, or was it the, they had it. I think there was a beer joint on one side and grocery store on the back side. Uh, and I got to know all those people and the, the marshals are, were great people. Uh, JB's still a great guy too. Very good. Well, thank you so much. Alrighty. I appreciate your uh, information.